Well, hello everyone. I hope that you've been well for the last month. I have finally finished my painting. It's taken me eight months. It's been a fun project. I haven't worked on it like every day, all day, but um, a few hours here and there. And um, so yes, it took me a lot of hours and it's all been out of my head. So that's a different experience for sure. And it was really fun uh, just to have that freedom to create whatever you want to create and even the perspective can be slightly different. Um, I'm going to share with you <clears throat> my experience and I hope that you learned some stuff and here we go. Enjoy! <laughs> Here it is. This painting is completely out of my head. Well, I say completely. <laughs> I really did look at a few images online just to make sure that I knew that I was doing things correctly, or at least some things correctly. And then I would sometimes pose for the people myself and just look at myself in the mirror or take photos of myself and just see if that's how an arm moves, if, if that's how it bends, if that's how knees move, you know, trying to get that uh, realism in there you know, as much as possible, but it did turn out a little bit more cartoony than I was hoping, but that's all right. It's, it's not about <laughs> just looking at pictures and reference and copying reference. It's about seeing what you can do and learning. So that's what I did for this painting. And I really did enjoy the process for most of it. It was much more spontaneous, much more, um, just loose, uh, than I normally do. And so that was, a good thing to learn. I did a preliminary painting, uh, some sketching before then, and then I went ahead and um, cut this piece of wood and started working on it. So a lot of ideas uh, for this came out of the fact that COVID hit and I was just a little worried that I might lose my mind and uh, if I didn't start a painting because I had just finished my other one. I was preparing to leave for Africa and then this all happened. So. I thought even if I do end up going and I have to just leave this painting behind or I just bring it in progress, then that's fine. So I started this to save my sanity <laughs> and um, I'm really glad that I did because, you know, I'm as an artist, sometimes we can be a little on the crazy side, so <laughs> we need to paint to keep ourselves sane. You know that. <laughs> So yes, um, I wanted to get a feeling of movement in this painting, um, have these people dancing. I wanted a really happy feel for it because I knew that people would be uh, a little depressed with this whole uh, thing happening, all the shutdowns and stuff. So here we go. Um, I blocked people in after drawing them. I drew not a lot of detail, just enough for me to get the good, a good idea of how these people were going to uh, be proportionally, and then I transferred them onto the um, onto the piece of wood. I think I just um, drew them by looking at my um, drawing reference, and um, yeah, so just kind of felt it out. It wasn't exactly perfect. It's not this whole painting is not exactly perfect. Even the perspective is a little bit off. Um, but I thought I could you know, go back and change it, but then I kind of liked it because it just furthered that idea of movement. So <laughs> I didn't want you to get exactly seasick when you look at this painting, but I wanted you to kind of get that feel that everything in the ship is moving because the whole ship is moving and then the people are dancing, so that adds energy. I loved painting uh, all of these instruments. It was really fun getting that piano in there and then the other um, 
the other instruments as well, the violin. I played piano for a while and I played violin for a while, so I did know a little bit more about how to move for those and how, how the notes are played and stuff. So I tried to put my knowledge into this painting as much as possible so that I wouldn't have to go in and look at reference. So one thing that's important when you're doing something, just any kind of landscape or scene, is to add that dimension in there. So try to make it look like the things that are far away are just more faded out, not as detailed, and then things get crisper as they get closer. So I added those like dark, dark backgrounds just to get that feel um, automatically, and then I could just add on top of that. That's one of the beautiful things about acrylic paint is that you can paint dark and then add light over top of it, which is a little more labor intensive because you do have to add a few layers of that light um, paint because it's not very thick. Generally, you can get thicker paint if you want to, but I don't. Um, so yeah, doing um, dark to light is doable and then doing light to dark is also doable. So with watercolor, it's mostly light to dark. You don't want to put your dark in right away just because it's permanent, like it's not going to come out very easily. You can kind of scrub it out, but yeah, that usually doesn't work very well for me. So, um, And then oil, you usually work from dark to light so that you can get rid of all that canvas. Uh, you can have those rich tones in there. But with acrylic, I, I feel that you can do either way. And I also kept some of that wood that I painted on um, in those, like, those uh, slabs that are like holding up the ship. Um, so I kept that wood shining through and just added that clear coat to it and then I uh, just tinted it, tinted it in some places and stuff. So I really liked the way that the grain of the wood looked, so I wanted to keep that. And that was a, you know, a decision just because I liked it. So um, there's another thing that I should talk about. Um, when you start painting, you have your ideas and you get it down and you kind of have those guidelines. but then change things as the painting goes. Like for this, all I had were those few sketches at the beginning, and then I just thought of things to add. Like I added that galley in the background, the kitchen, and then um, the sky up here. And uh, I ended up making some of my um, some of my perspectives like a little bit different. Like um, oh, I don't know how to explain it, but like the ceiling, the the roof of the inside of the ship, uh, it originally was going to be all flat with those like holes in it, but then I ended up, because it, I just kept looking at it and thinking, it doesn't look flat, it looks like it's um, elevated in that certain area, which I actually liked more because, again, it created more dimension. So yeah, there are lots of decisions that I ended up making that were just, they were thought out, but not super thought out. And I also painted over a lot of things, like um, that's another thing that I've been learning still not great at it but if you work for hours on something and you paint it but you know that you could do better or you know that you could add something on top or or because you I wanted more people in here so I put more people in later and um, just don't get attached to those parts of the painting that look good if there's something that you could do that's better to better the whole composition uh, you can even paint things out, like if you have an extra tree in the landscape and, and it's just kind of not balanced properly, you can get rid of that tree, it's okay. <laughs> even if you spent like five hours on it, it's okay to go back and get rid of stuff. And I do have that luxury right now because I have a job that's not, that's not based on my paintings and making sure that I get things out at a certain time. I do have that luxury to go back and make things exactly the way I want them to be. Um, the only danger is that I'll get tired of it, but, but yeah, uh, I can spend those months and months on a painting and I'm not too worried about that, but, but yeah, it depends on your, uh, your walk and your painting journey. If, if, it's, um, if it's a matter of time and you know you could do better, but you just don't have the time, then don't worry about it too much. Just, just do well and, and get it out. So when you're doing something from your head, it's usually not like completely from your head because you do have the world around you that you've been observing your whole life and you're most likely drawing from that, um, just like drawing ideas from it. So for me, um, for this painting, I was thinking about how I know a person moves and how I know wood grain look, 
<clears throat> looks and how a ship feels and uh, the lighting in there and just things that I've gathered through my whole life of observation, which has not been that long. I'm like 27, but, but I'm really excited for the day that I'm like 60 and I've observed so much more. But anyways, we'll leave that for later. Um, but yeah, just, uh, just thinking about does this look right? Does this person look like they're moving in the right way? And honestly, people are hard to do because we as people know what people look like. And so we've been observing people our whole lives, whether it's consciously or not. And if a, a wrist moves a weird way, we know we're like, oh, that wrist looks dislocated or it looks wrong uh, just because we've been observing it our whole lives. And if you're going to do um, something that's like an antique lamp, for example, like I have these lamp lanterns up in the um, just hanging there. And those are harder to tell if they're right or wrong just because we haven't seen them as often as we've seen people. So, yes, so just make sure, um, just make sure you do something that makes sense is my advice. Like, it can be as fun and as gestural as you want it to be, um, but if, if it's turned a weird way or if it's, um, yeah, it just looks like off somehow, then people are going to notice that. It's not going to flow as nicely. So I did zoom into some pictures that I just found on the internet for things like the details in the wood grain and stuff. I didn't follow it exactly. I wanted to change the perspective to be in my, to be um, better for my painting and, and, or just take like little bits of different images or whatever, or look at my own um, wood in my house. I know I did that a little bit. Like uh, I was in my basement, which is mostly finished, but there's some unfinished pieces, and there are just these bars of wood going across. So I kind of just stared at them one <laughs> one afternoon, and it's like, okay, I see where the where the knots go, and and how the wood grain goes around it, and the the different colors in there and stuff. So just observe, and you'll notice that when you're doing uh, a piece of artwork that takes a long time, you will really notice those things around you more, <laughs> like. Um, if you're drawing a tank top, then you're going to notice when you see someone wearing a tank top. Or if, you, if you're drawing wood grain like this, uh, you're definitely going to notice that. Another thing that I like to do with color in my paintings is to add... I want, I want it to be realistic in some ways, but I also want it to be interesting. So to add all these different like washes and shades and stuff just to bring life to it. And if you'll notice... Uh, in real life, we see lots of different colors, like whether it's from uh, reflection or from the light that's hitting it um, from the sun or um, just the local colors. Like there are so many different things that we see with our own eyes and not like you need color for a good piece of art. There are a ton of people who do amazing drawings with just graphite and I don't know how they do that. That's just so cool. Um, but. Yes, if you're going to add color, then do it in a way that speaks to you, in a way that shows what you want to show. Um, if you've got a certain story in mind, then make sure you're trying to portray that story with all of your painting, like with the, with the figures, or if you don't have figures, with the landscape, or just the character of it, and then the color plays into that as well. And this was a very, very dark painting too, like the content is bright um, and I did try to make the colors joyful, but just because of the subject, because they're in a ship at night, <laughs> um, it's going to be dark. So I did struggle with that a little bit, like just um, when I would see it, just, I don't know, it would be hard to see. Um, it is harder to see at night, that's just a fact. So it was okay that some things were kind of disappearing, um, that I had that atmosphere in there too, like it's it's not just clear air in there. I wanted to show um, like some dust or just some, just some musty like atmosphere. So later on in the painting as well, I kind of uh, added some, added some opaque washes um, just to, to get that, um, that look. So I had to paint a few things a few times, like uh, these things um, just on the roof of the of the ship. I had to go over and redo them later just because they got so lost in my atmosphere and I wanted to bring out some more detail later on. So I'm looking at this now and I'm like, oh, it looks, you know, it looked so different back then. 
but that also doing that a few times gave me the experience like I could remember oh right I added this last time or um, I thought that this looked better than that last time and uh, changed stuff in that process as well so it's all about the experience folks all right getting ready for the exciting move I talked about this I've been talking about this constantly but here we go Places to see Blue skies ahead Yes, I'm on my way And nothing, something, 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 something I'm going, yay, I'm getting onto the plane Yahoo! So there we go, I have moved to beautiful Niger, which I am loving. It's hard being away from home, it's hard to know that I'm not going back for a long time, but it's also just so interesting and exciting to live in a different culture. I've never done that before, I've traveled a lot, but I haven't ever actually settled down and lived in a different culture. So it's a different experience, for sure. So one thing that I am gonna try differently I think in my next painting or maybe in the next few paintings um, is my line work like um, my edges is what I mean so if you'll notice in this one a lot of my edges are very very crisp and I like that I like that look but I also don't want to get stuck into one style especially if I'm kind of doing it all the time and maybe getting a bit bored of it and I, I've been looking at so many pictures of artists work because I'm preparing to teach and I want to go through all the art books and all the art books that we have at the school and so I've been looking at so many uh, mass drawing uh, like paintings from the masters and it just it makes me like yearn to be able to do what they're doing and some of them are very um, just painterly like their edges are not super straight and their um, their colors just the way that they uh, are beside each other and they can just do something that looks so good with only a few strokes and I do want to learn how to do that so I don't know I'm actually nervous about it because I haven't really done that before and you know every time you try something new it's a little bit nerve-wracking but I'm gonna do it <laughs> I'm hopefully gonna get it up and show you but for my next painting that I'm planning right now, I've kind of th thought through it all. And I have a few parts that can be a bit more painterly, so we'll see. I don't know. I think I'll have a tendency to want to go back into the straight edges, but we will see. <laughs> I will try. <laughs> but I think it's going to be really, really good for my art career, my painting, uh, even just, just my actual physical paintings. Um, if I've got different materials and I'm going to work a little bit differently or even a different um, climate here, I have to think about different kind of ways of painting too. So I'm also going to be teaching uh, at, a, at a high school and an elementary school. It's kind of mixed. Um, so that'll be really, really good as well, like to just Already I've learned so much from going through these uh, art books and then writing my own curriculum as well. I have to think through everything. I have to think, okay, why do I paint? Why, what, what's important in this? And why is this element important? And why is that element important? And do I use those in my own art? And I'm, I'm hoping that it makes me a better artist. I, I'm sure it will, just from the experience of it. And then um, I'm excited to be able to pass on what I've been learning in my life, like I still feel like such a baby when it comes to art. Like I have not, oh, I have not done as 
many hours as so many other artists and there are so many things I don't know. Like doing this painting really humbled me as well because it does look quite cartoony and um, I don't know how to not make it look that way. So yes, yeah, so I am learning <laughs> uh, and thank you for watching and for bringing, you know, coming along on this journey with me because I'm hoping that I can teach you some things and you can teach me some things. Because I'm here though, it is a little bit more difficult to get things posted. Um, the internet has not been great. Like um, even right now, I just tried to load a uh, the Filmora page to to pay my um, my fees, and it wouldn't load like for half an hour. So I'm like, okay, well, I will give up on that for now and try at nighttime or something or early in the morning. But yes, I'm, I'm hoping that I can still get videos out. I do love editing and I love sharing with you. And as I'm teaching, I would be really interested in like getting the students to do some stuff for my videos or um, just like adding the different things that I learned, talk about the curriculum that I created and how I did that and what's in there and what I think is important for, um, for your art as well. So I do want to continue with it. Uh, I'm sorry that this is out so late, like way later than I wanted it to be, but yeah, there were just a few hiccups along the way and adjusting to a new culture is, it, it's a lot. It's, uh, I'm expelling a lot of energy, if that's the right word. But yes, um, I just wanted to encourage you to try stuff that's new um, and push yourself out of your comfort zone, even if you're not 100% happy with the results in the end. Just, just try it. Try, um, try learning something and pushing just your boundaries and trying a new painting style too. It's, it's gonna be fun. I'm really excited. And maybe try something that's just purely out of your imagination. You have a huge imagination. Everyone does. Everyone has just so many things to bring to the painting world and the art world, and I'm sure that you do too. I'm just loving being here and learning and trying new things. I've been pushing myself personally out of my comfort zone too. I was a super shy child. I never ever thought that I would be teaching at a school. I'm still so nervous about it, <laughs> but I'm sure that it'll be fine. God's gotten me this far. He'll get me that far as well. And just, just take tiny steps at a time, even for your painting career. Like take some big leaps for sure and then take all those tiny steps and take the time to get good at everything that you're doing and enjoy what you're doing too. It can be frustrating, it can be absolutely stressful at times, but you but it's therapy in the end. Like doing stuff that's hard is good for you and pushing yourself is so good for you and other people will see it in your art and they'll be excited to look at it. So Thank you so much for watching this, and um, yes, I'm hoping that I can get some more videos out to you um, next month, maybe sooner than that. We will see. Love you guys.
Well, there you go. I hope that that was slightly inspiring and uh, that you learned some stuff and uh, that you enjoyed watching this process. And you can see it's a lot of work. Uh, things changed <laughs> throughout the whole painting. Uh, like I moved and yes, uh, I had to ship the painting across the world <laughs> and I've learned some stuff for sure. Not even just with the technical stuff with art, but I've learned some other stuff in my life as well. And hey, that's all, that's what art's about, right? It's about learning and it's about sharing your experience. So I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great month. I'm hoping that I'll be able to continue doing my YouTube. Um, because I've moved, it's, <laughs> it's, the internet is a lot slower here. I've moved to West Africa and I don't know if downloading and uploading is going to be a reality. So we'll see. I hope so. <laughs> and yes, so hopefully I will see you next month. Take care. Enjoy painting. Enjoy your life. Enjoy different experiences and make connections with people and new relationships and old relationships. Keep building them up and uh, I'll see you guys later. Take care.